Hey there, and welcome back to our last lesson, lesson number six, from our wonderful book, Spiritual Power Tools by Jane Hart. And today, um, I want to talk about guidance, the spiritual power tool number seven, which you can find on page 64. I think it's really, really important. And so we find here that she mentions four specific things that we should do when we seek out the guidance. And the first thing, of course, is you have to still your mind. She says, don't resist your thoughts. Just let them pass through your head. In this way, you create a clean slate in your consciousness. Now, what I do when the mind is, you know, racing, and but I want the guidance anyway, I'll find these thoughts that are coming through that have nothing to do with, with the wisdom and guidance that I'm seeking. So I'll tell that thought, not now. We'll come back to you later. I'll take care of that matter. But for right now, I want the guidance of God on this matter. And for me, that somehow uh, equates that my mind knows that I haven't forgotten it and that there's plenty of other things I should be doing. But right now, I want the guidance and wisdom of God. And you've got to find that spot where you can get calm and clear the slate. It may be driving to work. It may be upon rising in the morning. It may be before you go to bed at night. You know, they say, take what's to your heart, to God. And the answer is underneath your pillow in the morning. So that's number one. And number two, she says, release any preconceived ideas or emotional investment you have. Listening is difficult if you desire a certain response. You can't truly ask if you think you already know the answer. What a waste of time. Don't bother going to guidance if you're going to do whatever it is you think you should be doing already. But by seeking out the guidance, we tap into the unlimited resources of God rather than the box that our human element can only go into. We can unleash all the potentiality. Everything can be sitting there for us. And what a great resource to be able to tap into that. So we want to be sure that we're open and receptive. God, bring it on. I'm open. I don't know the right solution to this problem. I'm putting it in your hands and you give it back to me with the solution. It's an awesome experience because the solution will come, which she brings up in guidance number three. She says, guidance may come from a surprising source, a song on the radio, an idea in a book or a movie, the casual comment of a friend, or even a billboard on the highway may provide your answer because you're open and receptive. Sometimes that answer comes the moment you get clear, but sometimes it may take a while. And that's where no, number four comes in where she says, be patient and accept the answer you receive. Don't judge it or try to analyze it with your logical mind. You are wasting your time. You will talk yourself out of the guidance of God if you go to your logical mind. Well, you know, I don't think I should do that because this might happen. And oh, if I do that, then they're going to get upset. No. Don't go to your logical mind. Show the universe you accept the solution that was offered by acting on it, by acting on it. So I want to share with you uh, the slide I created. And I'll go there. And so here we have a couple of things that we want to be mindful of. And she mentions this on page 65, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about it. When you're asking for an, about an emotional situation, you see, you're not asking, uh, well, what is the next course of action I should take? Uh, but rather than an emotional issue, I'm angry and I don't know how to release that anger, right? That's what we're asking for in guidance. Or this just happened to me, somebody... Um, did something to me and I, I know I'm below the line and I don't want to be there in my emotions. So I want to get above the line and what can I do, God? And it's important because it's challenging to discern whether the answer is from our intuitive mind or from our, our desires or fears, which is below the line. When you receive the information, you can test your guidance by asking yourself these questions. Is it good for all concerned? Is it moral? Is it going to hurt anyone? Does it demonstrate unconditional love? 
It was just at an event last night and we were talking about finding your true love. You know, and some people shared that they know that their true love is not somebody else's spouse because it is not good for all concerned. We can't want what our neighbors have. We have to desire what is right for us. And of course, we know that it's not morally right to sleep with your neighbor's spouse. It's not right. And it is going to hurt someone. And does it demonstrate unconditional love? You see, when you're asking yourself these four questions, boy, this is a biggie. You could put these four questions on your bathroom mirror and refer to them because when we get emotional, we can get off kilter. Our egos will talk us into solving the emotional feeling that we're in. I'm feeling anger and I wanna lash out and our ego will find a way to cause anger on somebody else because of the way we feel. We've all experienced that. When we get triggered and we lash out and we say something, we go, oh, I didn't wanna do that. Or we say somebody and call somebody a derogatory name or, oh, it's just, you don't wanna go there. So when we're seeking out guidance, this is a great tool to use to be able to discern where this guidance is headed. You know, and what is unconditional love? You see, how do you demonstrate unconditional love? And it's different for each of us, but there are some general guidelines. And, and I bring that question up as part of our discussion questions, because it's a great discussion question. How do you demonstrate unconditional love to another person or to yourself? Wow, well, that's a good discussion question. And I've left you with two others. Describe when you've not been able to discern whether your guidance was from your ego or from your heart. And how did you resolve this conflict? Maybe it's a journal question, but maybe you want to share that with the group. And, and an interesting question I, I had while I was doing this lesson, what moral value have you changed in the last 10 years? I'll give you an example. This is a little older than 10 years, but you know, the whole uh, women's movement, the police movement, you know, um, treating everybody equally. This whole concept has really caused people to take a look at what are their values? What's their moral compass that makes it, that's not okay. I'm not gonna go into that. I'm not gonna go above that line. There's a line in the sand, I won't do this, you know? And one of the things that I noticed, because I came from corporate America, is that it used to be okay to take a client out to lunch, fill them up with liquor, get them to sign the contract, maybe give them a year's membership to the golf club, or to even give them a cash or gifts of liquor or something. It used to be totally acceptable to do that. It's not today. No, there aren't, there aren't lunches anymore. There's not even, uh, for a lot of organizations, there's not even expense accounts. You just don't do it anymore. And of course, we know, we know very clearly that it's not okay to deface or debase a woman, no matter what position a man might be in. It's just not okay anymore. And it used to be okay. We silently pushed it under the rug. Those are two things that have changed dramatically in our culture, because our values have changed, our moral value around those. So what moral value have you changed, you personally, in the last 10 years? And maybe you wanna share that. So I hope you got something from this, this series. I've enjoyed it as I've shared and uh, look forward to meeting with you on week 10 as we all gather uh, together to share pros and cons of not just this book, but what did you gleam and to share your uh, social activity, to share your a community activity with the entire group because there's a lot of great ideas. If your group is struggling with either of those things, uh, feel free to uh, give Michelle or I a call and uh, we'll give you some suggestions. You know, we hope that that'll help. There's always things that can be addressed to help you facilitate through this. And so I love you. I bless you. And I'll see you next time. Take care.